It's prom night. My old man was kind enough to send over his old tuxedo from his time at high school. It took a bit of suing, but I got it look, looking pretty good. Judging by the wine stains on the sleeves, Dad, Dad's made a lot of important announcements in this tuxedo. Ugh. Gives it a bit of a history, I guess. When I arrive at Fang's place with a cheap corsage, I see the promulgate granite parasite waiting outside the front door. Great. And dear God, how can she move in that dress? The top half looks like it's been shrink wrapped to her body. And I'm 100% certain there's nothing be beneath the bottom half. Oh. I look quite dapper. Oh, I already knocked Annan. Nazar will be out in a moment to invite us in. I'm sure Fang will be getting ready too. I've heard the two of you are going to prom together. Ladies and gentlemen, the next Sherlock Holmes. The next Sherlock Holmes, if you will. No, I just happen to be here in a suit to go golfing. I ignore her, focusing instead on not stabbing my palm even more on this flower storms. You what the fuck it free is free. And nothing more free than a five finger discount from the neighbor's yard. You and Fang just make the cutest couple. Did you two sign up for prom king and queen? No, she said something about the fascist sexist monarchy monarchy system. Speaking of monarchies. You know when you go to Walmart and you just see the tabloids on the side? The, like, the tabloids really want the queen to die. Like, they're obsessed with her just keeling over. And I'm not sure why. It's very confusing. Well, Nazar and I have entered and we are going to be prom royalty. Oh, I cannot wait to wear that beautiful tiara. I picked it out and everything will be and everything and the crown for Nazer. <laughs> oh that belly button. God damn, holy shit. <laughs> I've already tuned her out. Nazer opens the door. Well if it that isn't the fanciest jacket I've seen in a while. It's certainly better than the background of Avatar he always wears. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Sorry to keep you waiting, Naomi. This thing is a nightmare to get over my wings. Oh, Annan, come on in. Didn't know you were already here. He waits for the two of us to enter, pecking Naomi on the cheek when she passes. Fang's mother speaks up from the kitchen. Oh, is that Annan? Here we go. The small pterodactyl comes out, a bowl she's struggling to stir in her arms. My, aren't you handsome? Pictures, I need to get pictures of you and Lucy. She sets the bowl aside on the coffee table to frantically search for her Polaroid camera. To think Lucy would have such a wonderful young man to take her to prom. I found it. Hold still, dear. I like getting slapped in the face by the son's dick. I blink the blindness away, so that's so that's why Nazar has those fucking aviators. Lucy will be downstairs in a bit. She's just getting the last of her makeup on. In the meantime, take a seat. I've got some cookies in the oven that are almost ready. Uh, yeah, th thank you, ma'am. 
I take my seat in the usual spot, sinking in and feeling the pillows conform around my spine. This thing must cost a fortune. Fang's dad is a police commissioner, if I recall. That explains the luxurious furnishings. Now that I think about it, I'm surprised I haven't seen him yet. So, <laughs> I hope I didn't just ruin these slacks. I, I, I am still looking for Ray Finkel. Where could he be? <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't have something tucked in between his legs. That'd be awful. And outdated. Good evening, sir. I didn't even see you in your chair, sir. My apologies. Don't sweat it, son. The thing about humans, as well as many carnivores, is that their vision is based largely on movement. You'd be surprised how effective staying quiet and stationary can be. How close you can get to someone without them knowing. Sweetheart. No, intimidating the suitor. The big guy deflates a bit in his chair. Point is, don't get any funny ideas. Yes, sir. Just... Oh, that, that's a bar right there. God... God damn. Whew. We're all taking the NASCAR, right? Yeah, yeah. Once Van gets down, we'll skedaddle. How did she say that with a straight face? So, so until then, we just sit and chill. We could take more pictures. Please, no. Oh, I would love to make this a little photo op. <laughs> I, I love the shit they added. That's amazing. 30 photos later, and I never want to see another camera again. Fang's mom decided to take pictures of every possible combination of us. I don't know which was worse, having the pose with Naomi or Fang's dad. <laughs> I don't know which was worse, having the pose with Naomi or Fang's dad, digging his murder claws into my shoulder. I lost nearly all feeling in that arm. Pretty sure that'll leave a bruise worse than my accelerated hug with a stare bollard last month. At least the pics with Nazar were, the, were a nice reprieve. We ended up looking like the Blues Brothers, standing by, by, side by side in fuck ugly suits. Just as I was at, about to resign myself to premature blindness from the camera's flash, my savior arrives. Oh, Hannon, you're already here. Lucy comes downstairs in a white dress. The back of the dress trails down the stairs behind her. Can't say I'd imagine she'd ever willingly, willingly wear one of these. Yeah, I've been here a while. Your dress looks great, Lucy. Oh, doesn't it? When I got the school's email, I knew right away that the precious little get-up get I saw shopping the day before would be just perfect. And I even got Neezer's outfit while I was at it. I would have been fine going, just going in church clothes, for the record. Oh, hush, the two of you look, like, ju look just like your father and I when we met at a school dance. We all look at Neezer's rather colorful get-up for a moment. It was somehow still less loud than his usual jacket. Come again? Oh yes, I remember it fondly, right dear? Lucy's father hasn't moved from his seat. I don't know, do I? Oh yes, I remember you in that zazzy suit. Zoo suit! <laughs> I love you. When I'm with you, I'm what you call uh, a hip cat. I am hip to the jive. You saw me by the punch bowl, strode right up and offered a dance. 
there was a coat hanger hanging out of the top of the back of your neck. I couldn't explain why. I could, to this day, I could never explain why. Mom, stop. I'm trying to create the mental image. Nope. Just can't do it. That look her dad is giving me. It's saying, you'll be upgraded to a putter if you never speak of this to anyone. I can see where Fang gets her temper from now. <clears throat> Fine by me. Oh, but Lucy, you look so precious in that dress. Oh, we need more pictures. The tiny pterosaur tries to push Lucy next to her father, fighting with the duo to pose properly. I glance at Nazer, who seemingly resigns himself to countless more photos. Uh, I think we're going to be late if you take any more pictures. Both Lucy and Nazer are not in agreement to that. Oh, just a couple pictures. You'll be able to show the, these when, you're, when your own children are going to prom. A bit early to think of something like that. I feel a tug on my arm and spin around to Naomi giving me a look of uh, unfiltered frustration. Oh, Lucy, there's a string coming out of your dress. Where are the scissors? Please don't, don't pull it. They'll flop out. <laughs> I'll get them, and come with me. What? Why? I don't, I don't live here. It's, uh, the scissors are kept on the top shelf, and I can't reach. She pushes me towards the kitchen. I don't even know how Nazer doesn't catch on to what she's doing. What are you up to, Naomi? Oh, God. She pinches the bridge of her nose and exhales slowly. Look, normally, I would be thanking you from the bottom of my warm heart for fixing Lucy and Nazar's relationship. They're siblings, and that's how it should be. Then what's the big fucking deal? Let me finish. However, I don't think Lucy is completely fixed. She's still not talking to me. She just runs away from everyone at school now, and Nazar keeps texting her. I had to call him out on it that he, was, that he was slacking on his school duties, behaving like a crass idiot just like you. Just like you. What have you done to them both? The only thing I've done is support her. I didn't do it for you or your stupid plan. I just want to give a, have a good time with Lucy without any more bullshit. And I swear to God Almighty, if my night with Nazar is ruined because of Lucy's... Nazar Naomi sneer vanishes, replaced with her usual false smile. But okay, of course, you two deserve it after everything you've done. Suddenly, I feel another tug on my arm. This time, Fang's mom dragging me back into the middle of the room. No need for scissors anymore. Oh, Hannah and I never got any pictures of you and Lucy yet. God, please, no more pictures. Fine, but we really should be going if we want to. Uh, just a couple. I can ev even send these ones to your parents. I bet they're just as proud of you as, as we are of Lucy and Nazar. I'm sure they're just as surprised that I'm actually going to prom. Posing with Lucy is nice, but I make sure to be extra careful where my arms go in front of her dad. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Ugh. Ugh. The searing strobe lights finally end, and I can feel my early onset of blindness. These photos need to have a special album all their own. Honey, we need another photo album. Mom. Oh, fine. B make sure to have fun at prom. I glance, glance over, and Lucy's dad catches me dead in the eyes. Oh, by midnight. I only manage a weak nod as Lucy rushes me towards the door. <laughs> the ride in the Nays car is awkward and unevent uneventful. <laughs> oh, what a dumbass. 
Neither didn't chuck his jacket to the back seat as a divider, so Lucy and I can sit next to each other this time around. I heard that Spears might be giving a little musical number to Dyke. Neither stopped spreading rumors from the junior class. So that was just a rumor. Damn. What, do you want to hear him sing some opera? He'll shatter that glass all right, let me tell you. I'd certainly pay to see him try. Good Lord, no. My ears take enough abuse from him during, during the school day. He won't be singing, but we did get rid to be a DJ for, for the night. His only condition was that he got to wear that mascot uniform, which is rather odd, but whatever. Everyone aside from Nazar involuntarily sighs. What? Was it something I said? Pulling into the school's parking lot by the gym, I take in the view. The students strung up various strings of lights along the overgrowth of vines around the school. The line to get in isn't too long, and it only takes a few mo minutes to get inside. Inside is about as well decorated as outside. Those nerdy little Chinese lanterns are strung around, about from wall to wall. <clears throat> oh, they go with my dress. How about that? Wow, it's almost like the person who pl planned the entire event has insider information on the decor. Color me surprise. Mumbling. Fuck. I think I'll hit up the catering first. What about you guys? I'll pass. I can't afford any fancy food. What? 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 Price of the food is included with the, in the tickets, man. How poor are you? I live in Skin Row, remember? Sorry, forget I asked. The thought of being able to eat like an actual human for once already pushed Dazer's apology out of my mind. In that case, I'll go get food for the, both me and Lucy. What do you want? Uh, get me the closest thing they have the barbecue. Oh, Nazar, if you're gonna get in food too, could you get me a plate of kapamaki? Wrong country. Nazar slugs me on the shoulder. Oh, looks like we're playing wait waiters for a bit. Seems that way. <laughs> I follow him to the food table. I don't even recognize most of these dishes. I get a heaping plate of seven or eight different dishes for Lucy and pick out a steak for myself, grabbing a few nice looking sandwiches from the other end of the table. Wait, I have to get drinks too. Fuck, my hands are already full. You got everything? Uh, don't got drinks. We can always do a return trip, I guess. Hey, is this what Lucy would want? Honestly, man, you could probably get her to eat a rock if you told her it came from a cow. I see. Nazar starts heading back to where we left the other two. He suddenly stops halfway through, and I have to catch myself from dropping the plates. What's wrong? Nazar gestures forward. Naomi is attempting to talk to Lucy, <clears throat> overwhelming her with questions. Lucy's looking on edge. I should probably intervene quick. Dress is very nice, Lucy. We should go out together. We should go out together clothes shopping sometime. Uh, oh, come on. You're in need of new friends right now, right? Why don't we... Hey, we're back. We have food. Naomi turns her attention to the plates Nazar and I are carrying. Oh, Nazar, did you get the sukiyaki? Oh, I guess I forgot. Sorry, I'll go run and get it. That's fine. I was getting to be friends with Lucy, and... Lucy pushes herself away from the table and strides away. Oh? Huh? I leave the plate behind and chase after her. Lucy has retreated to a back corner of the g of the gym. I just can't, Annan. Then don't. God, I'm doing it again. Everyone just wants to have a good time, and I'm ruining everything. It's all right.
Yeah, two two audio tracks are playing, I think. Anyways, I caught a glimpse of Nazar and Naomi away at their seat and enjoying themselves. I think Lucy saw the same thing because she snapped back to me and wrapped her arms around my waist. This is screwing with me. You know what? No need to be upset. <laughs> Nazar and Naomi aren't my prom dates, just you. She breathes in and lets out a comforting sigh. I looked around for any witnesses, feeling <laughs> feeling quite smug with myself. <laughs> but that suit suit does kind of stink. God, thank you. I appreciate it. Confidence shattered. Oh, there you two are. Our principal strides over to to us, signing off a few papers on a clipboard he has. Ah, uh, Lucy, there you are. That surprise you wanted is about ready. Surprise? Yeah, the the one you filed papers for a few weeks back. Everything's ready for it. Is the surprise you giving an opera number? I'm on a pretty tight schedule tonight. Don't have a lot of time for jokes. Follow me. Spears, Spears leads us around the crowd to behind the temporary stage set up at the other end of the gym. You signed up for something? I don't think so. Alright, you're on in ten or so minutes. Lucy freezes. On? Surprise! Oh no, no, no. Oh, oh lord. Those jubilees. <laughs> oh. Trish, Rosa, and Stella are carrying around various instruments and equipment. Trish is visually exhausted and stressed. I'll leave you to it. You'll get in after Reed's done with his DJ bit. What the hell is this? So, Fang? Fang, we get to play at the prom. We have all the instruments ready. I brought in a regular guitar for you to play. I don't mind. We can play whatever you want. What do you say? Lucy is completely catatonic by this point, unable to respond. <laughs> what? Oh, man, I, didn't, I didn't see you there. You look less dorky with a suit on. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> you came with Fang? That's sweet. Reed's also coming. I don't know if he'll manage in the costume, but he'll play the drums. <laughs> what do you say? Whose idea was this? It was a group. It was a group effort. We're here to help, right? We've noticed Lucy's been struggling by herself. The expectant stares of the trio snap Lucy from her stupor. She flinches a bit, then bolts out of the backstage area. Rosa and Stella look as, as though, though they're only just now thinking this was a bad idea. Trisha's smile melts from her face. What were you thinking? Eh? <laughs> Please tell me, is Fang fine? She was fine, Trish. <laughs> now look at what you've done. Where do you think you're going? Trish tries to leave, but I managed to grab her shoulder. I'm going after her. Wait, Hannon. Damn it, <laughs> Rosa pulls my arm free, letting Trish run after Lucy. Let them solve this. I'm sure Lucy's at a point where she can deal with this. She most definitely is not, Rosa. God damn it, why'd you have to pull this stunt today of all days? Couldn't you have tried this bullshit any other time? Who are you Who are you to say I didn't? I've been talking to Lucy for a while, trying to get her to make amends with Trish. She never told me. I drew her the world and the sun. Past this night she'll achieve completion. Fulfillment. It's a good thing, Annan. For your sake, I hope they were upright. Does it matter if they're upright? What do you mean? I flipped the cards after I got back from the bathroom. Rosa, what did you do? 
I peeked. The world was upside down, so I fixed it. Adam, go get Fang. No need to tell me that. I'll, I'll leave the incompetent bunch behind to look for Lucy. Is that important, Stella? I thought it was just for play. Back in the gymnasium, gymnasium, I find Lucy huddled in a corner. Her hands are on her head as she tries to block out Trish. Trish, for her part, is shouting even louder. Loud enough for me to hear as I make my way to my girlfriend. You never thought about me all this time? Seriously, say something. Trish, I can't even look at you anymore. Why? Is it still what I said? I accept you and Anna. Seriously, you and him are cute together or, or some shit. I didn't mean any of what I said about you two. It wasn't just that. It was everything else. Shit you did and said, making me question years of my life. What are you talking about, Fang? Come on, let's play. This will be Worm Drama's biggest show to date. Don't, I don't want to. Come on, let's go. No. Trish. My shout shot. My shout shocks the desperate Triceratops away from Lucy. I glower as she turns a sickeningly sweet smile towards me. Yeah. And if I did or said anything that hurt you, then I'm sorry. But please tell Fang I'm sorry too. It, this isn't right. I hear footsteps behind me, and I already know it's the rest of the Loser Patrol without looking, Jesus Christ. Lucy, you have to give Trish one more chance. If you're not going to do it for her, then at least do it for me. Please, Lucy, you, you need to hear her out. Me and Reed miss us, together, shooting the shit, playing songs, making fun of Nazer. No, fuck off. Lucy, come on. Guys, you're overwhelming her. Back off for a sec. Stay out of this. Rosa, Stella, take a look around at this current situation. Once you realize what you're doing, please just leave us alone and don't bother us for the rest of the night. The two shut up and sheepishly back away a few steps. What, are you two flecking on me as well? Trish, I'm thinking Anon's right here. We shouldn't be intruding on their special night. Yeah, my reading was wrong, so, uh... I can't believe you two. Fang, we're playing now. I'm not asking again. She takes hold of Lucy's forearm and moves to take her back to the stage by force. Rosa blocks her way long enough for me to grab her wrist. Rosa, hey! Trish glares at me with murderous intent. Try again another time. She yanks her hand away from me in disgust, glancing between Stella and Rosa's disappointed stares and Fang's baleful ear. I guess that's it then. She backs off into the crowd. Lucy, are you alright? Yeah, I think I need to get away from the crowd. I wave off Stella and Rosa and lead Lucy away into the hallway. This is just the regular 6... 6 6.0 update, I guess you could say. Uh, so, I'm, I'm sure this is fixed in other versions, so... Whatever. We found an... Another corner near the bathrooms, unpopulated, aside from a few students passing by for smokes. Lucy looks like her entire world has crumbled. Are you alright? Let me help you. Anna, please. I just want to move past it. Okay, then. I don't want to see or talk to anyone anymore. Not even Rose or Stella. Just us. I just want to see you. Only you. It's alright. You won't see anyone else anymore tonight. 
Lucy's chuckle is choked back as she offers me a strange smile. There, I did it again. I ruined, it, ruined everything for everyone again. How do I respond to that? None of this is your fault. She sighs. I need to go to the bathroom. It's okay. I'll go get some water or something while you're in. Won't take a minute. Yeah, sure. All right. I watch her enter the restroom and re-enter the gym. I think think there's lemonade and stuff by the food tables. Hey, you. Raptor Jesus on his cross of rock. Give me strength. Hey, is Fang okay? No. Tell me about Fang. Are they happy? I'd say so. She and Naze are on, are on speaking terms. Did Fang say anything about me? Would they ever forgive me? Look, Trish, the shit, it ends now. She said she would have constant nightmares of you wanting to talk to her. Maybe this could have been sorted out, but not today. You're doing more harm by staying here, though. I advise that you stay clear of her for now. Trish is getting teary. I'd better shut up now. It's okay. Tell Lucy I only want her to be happy. I won't be a bother anymore. She'll never see or hear from me again. I told Spears to cancel the performance. I'm going home. Maybe there will be another chance sometime. Bye, Annan. She left. Oh, well. I get the drinks and return to Lucy. She downs the whole glass in one shot. You good? Yeah, fuck. Splashing your face with water works wonders. I'm good to go. I look at the crowd gathering around the stage. Principal Spears moves to the podium, sat there and taps on the microphone. Yeah, good to go, speaking of. Uh, I want to get some fresh air. Finally, I see a real smile from Lucy. Yeah, fresh air sounds pretty good right now. I hold my hand out and Lucy's hand links with it. Oh well, you you know what track is supposed to be playing. You could you know what I mean? You can tell it's just supposed to be the the ambience and not the music, so Walking out of the stuffy gymnasium where we met with the cooling evening air, I feel all the tension leave my body as Lucy's body presses close to my side. Cold? A little. I'm not used to wearing these things. My hand leaves hers. Before Lucy can balk, I, I wrap my arm around her. How's this? I can one-up this. Right, wings. Her wings wrap around both of us as a feather cloak of warmth. You want me to call a taxi or something? Nah, we can walk home. It's a 15 minute walk to her neighborhood, which is filled with comfortable silence for most of the way. I, I guess Lucy is as glad as I am to put everything that happened and not behind us. Okay. I'll figure all this out when I'm done. Uh, that's still not there. I don't know, man. Oh, God. Everything's fucked. I I think I might need to start over. Okay, they redrew that. That... 
I s Did you see that? Yeah, they added some more stuff. We'll figure all this out later, I promise. All right. I think everything's fixed. So you might see some, a couple of small differences than what you would see in update six. I'll figure all this shit out later. And everything's dark right there. Ugh. It's all good. Sorry if that was annoying. Okay. Her wings wrap around both of us as a feathered cloak of warmth. You want me to call a taxi or something? Nah, we can walk home. It's a 15 minute walk to her neighborhood, which is filled with comfortable silence for most of the way. I guess Lucy is as glad as I am to put everything that happened a night behind us. As we round the corner past the bus stop, I let out an audible groan as my eyes land on a particular cart. It's that same hot dog vendor from before, illuminated under a street light in the same spot. She notice us, notices us almost immediately and begins wildly waving. Does she know you? I shrug and shake my head as we continue to, to approach the vendor. It's all good now, except for that error, which means I had to do the whole game again. Uh, whatever. Well, if it isn't my favorite skinny and you brought your lady friend. It's like 10 at night. Wait a minute. It's like 10 at night. You can't get that many customers this late, right? Hey, you're here, aren't you? Now what can I get for you two lovebirds? <laughs> Nothing says date night like some steaming hot franks, let me, let me tell you. Is this different music? Sounds different. Yeah, I think we're good. We're just on our way back and uh... Fang's face glows bright red as she grasps her, her stomach. Uh, we left before we could eat, didn't we? Oops, well, nobody ever misses prom food, right? Prom? Oh man, I was a life at the party at mine. Let, tell me, you kids got Reef, Reef City's dumb mascot? We shake our heads. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, at least you, you at least spiked the punch, right? More shaking. Seriously? Please tell me you egged the principal's car. We live in a PC society now. We can't get away with shit like that. <laughs> no, we, uh, uh, I got into a fight. The vendor winces, but just as quickly puts on her smile. Oh, that's a bummer. You know, prom was where I discovered hot, <laughs> where I discovered hot dogs were my true calling. Let me tell you. They could be yours too, you know. Right, I don't think it will be. No double dog in tonight. Look, can we just like get some food? Our night's been a fucking wash. Not still young though. I listen to the sizzling meat as we wait. Look, kids, prom not it's not that special if you ask me. What makes something special is on you. For me, I think back to the shit I can actually remember. Carp's a hell of a drug. I'm getting off topic. Point is, the night isn't over yet. She motions to the table for, for us to sit at. Enjoy your dogs. Think about something to do with the rest of, the, rest of your night. 
make it something worth remembering. I'm going to start pack it, packing for the night, though, so that's enough chatter from me. Thanks. Lucy and I sit at the plastic folding table with our artery-clogging grease tubes. Dad grills these sometimes, but I've never had one that wasn't just ketchup and mustard. Actually, I can't even tell what's all on this. There's so much junk dumped on. They're just plain chili cheese dogs. Been a hot minute since I had one. Figured why not. Hmm. She made a good point. What should we do with the rest of our night? Lucy chews contemplatively. Not sure if she's heard me or is giving a silent review. Whatever we do, I want to get out of this dress first. It's freezing. Think your dad will let us watch some movies or something? Don't know, maybe. We only have cop movies and, and hunting document, documentaries, though. I'm down for it. After finishing, we wave goodbye to the vendor and start and start down Lucy's neighborhood. Oddly enough, there's no cars in the driveway when we arrive. Your folks get groceries this late at night? They probably took the opportunity to go on a date themselves. Don't remember the last time they took the occasion, though. Been maybe three years? Lucy kicks over a rock in the hot walkway and gets the key taped under it. Your parents put it there instead of under the doormat? Nah, I put this here. They don't know about it. Get kicked out for the night one too many times? You, you find ways back in, in on your own. Lucy stretches when we walk in. I'll change back in the normal clothes. Hang here a bit. Hang here a while, okay? I nearly sit in my normal place on the couch when I notice the armchair. The, the now vacant armchair. That's for Lucy's dad only. Oh, how it calls to me. Ah, that's better. Adam, Lucy, what are you doing up this late at night? You better not be listening to that ratchet again. <laughs> oh boy, that's a that's a word. Oh my God, Adam, get out of there before you leave your scent. Scent? You can't be serious. Hey, it's your head on the line. Nazar sat there once, and he ended up with a new scar. Suddenly, I found myself seated in my normal spot after all. I think they actually are on a date. If that's the case, the house is ours for at least an hour. Oh, sweet. We gonna raid your dad's liquor cabinet, then? He doesn't have one. Mom won't let him. Damn it, he really is whipped. So, movie night then. Well, I was thinking. Lucy took, took hold of the coffee table in the middle of the room and started pushing it aside. Uh, why are you doing that? With the living room now more open, Lucy approaches an antique stereo in the corner. I was really looking forward to dancing with you tonight, Annan. Double damn it. I thought I managed to get out of that. But the look in Lucy's eyes. I nod my head. Yes, I've always wanted to wanted to try out Mom's lights. The music playing from the stereo sounds positively ancient. Probably one of her parents' CDs, if it even uses CDs. Wait, what wait, what was that about lights? Lucy practically skips to the light switch and dims them. She then flicks a hidden switch that casts the room in a hazy violet glow. 
My eyes are drawn to the glowing marks all across her. Wow. Wow. Like what you see? She turns back to me and the anticipation in her eyes makes me feel more nervous. Oh shit, I just remembered. Just so you know, I can't dance. And I mean, I really can't dance. Like quadriplegic with Down Syndrome can't dance. But, yes, I've been waiting since forever. Her hand clasps mine, and Lucy doesn't seem bothered at all with how moist my palms are. We move to the impromptu dance floor, hand in hand, until we manage to find an open space. Right, okay, like this. Right, right hand on her hip, I think. I try to take her right hand with my left, but Lucy shakes her head. Both of her arms wrap loosely around my neck. Lucy's body is pressed against mine, the contours of her lith, lith frame fitting very well with mine. Oh hey, those alarms aren't broken. My left My left hand lands on her hip too, and now I can't stop thinking about how Lucy molds against my body near perfectly. Just follow my lead, okay? Mom gave me some lessons. I nod stiffly. Lucy mutters a one-two count before taking a st left step back. My right foot follows and lands on her toes. Ow! Sorry. No, 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 don't worry. Just, uh, slowly, okay? Yeah, okay. Lucy repeats the step back. I step forward and manage somehow. She then steps to the side as, and I try to follow. Our awkward steps continue like this. A couple successful steps late and then, and then I ruin it with a heavy, heavy step on her dainty toes. But slowly, slowly those failures are less and less common. By the third song, Lucy and I are finally starting to manage a basic waltz. As the night goes on, the, the dance becomes more natural. In the light of the various strobes, I'm able to relish the moment being this close, face to face. Whenever one of the lights passes directly through her eyes, they glow with the, the luster of cut amber and her diamond pupils soften. There's no one else in the room right now, just us. You think it's going well? What? Our prom not. It didn't go as planned, but, but I like where it's taken us. I wouldn't rather be anywhere else right now. Me neither. The last song slowly fades away, leaving us in a comfortable silence in each other's arms. Under the black lights, I can fully take in Lucy's beauty. I felt humbled that she'd consider this horrible night to have gone s still gone well. Lucy's eyes become lidded as she leans in towards my face. I meet her halfway, our mouths melding together. For all that's happened tonight, and Lucy and still Lucy enjoyed it. Three months later.